What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Day B. Watch Day B on TV where we gonna be yelling at everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day to day basis. And uh, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna do an energetic overview. We're gonna talk about the new moon in Libra, sun being in Libra. Um, you know, today in particular is going to be a numerology six day. And I guess we can kind of go uh, along the week or just kind of talk about significant days. Or just going through. I don't know. I, I want to switch up uh, how we're doing it. So let's get right into it. So, and I got the chart pulled up real quick. So, off the bat, just the energy itself is like, you know, we're in a situation right now where, again, we're, we're dealing with a grand air tron. So, um, the sun and moon in Libra is that's where our attention needs to be at. Wherever the sun is at, that's what we need to be paying attention to the most right now. So, with that in Libra, right? relationships partnerships balance harmony uh justice and when i say justice justice ain't you know it's it's a it's a word that kind of comes with a lot of different um definitions that that pop up in your head right when you start thinking about the legal system but i really mean justice in the sense of the exaltation of saturn saturn has certain standards that it needs to uphold saturn is you know um fair in a way you know what I'm saying saturn again when it goes into capricorn it can start to turn into the more manipulative energy just because earth is an internal energy and sometimes when we go internal things start to become ulterior so, you know what i'm saying start things start to become about uh slightly about manipulation in a sense you know what i'm saying so this is why you know the capricorn energy kind of comes with a lot of that 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 darker side of saturn but when we talk about just um uh you know, when we talk about Libra and then also the day side of Saturn being Aquarius, Aquarius is less, you know, it's still um, it, it, it's it's not as behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? It's the it's the day side of Saturn. So it's like, you know, a lot less. It doesn't have as much of the, you know, because when we talk about Capricorn energy in general, it's it's a heavier energy or. Yeah, it's a heavier energy. It's an energy that comes with a little more darkness. You know, a lot of times the darkness that's associated with Scorpio energy, you know what I'm saying? And not darkness as in good or bad or just, you know, just in general. It's, ha it's more in the dark spectrum, the behind the scenes spectrum, uh, the feminine spectrum, the, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, this ain't about Capricorn, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to y'all though. But um, for real, for real, when we talk about Libra, this is the exaltation of Saturn. So this is where Saturn actually loves to be. This is where Saturn has the most energy and the most vitality. It's like, you know, by the time it gets to Capricorn, and now it, it it's 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 had its fun. You know what I'm saying? If we think about the progression of the the the, the um the the chart you know what i'm saying it's like saturn it, it has its fun in libra right because it gets to do it with other people and it's more of a thing where there's balance it's in a younger state you know what i'm saying it's like you know when your when your grandfather was in his prime you know what i'm saying he, he was making connections he was out in the world he was building this he was building that um and 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 again he had certain standards that he was um exploring and upholding at a younger age so now when the when saturn gets older when saturn gets into full maturity into um capricorn it knows a lot so it's able to be the boss because of you know the different connections that it was able to make and the way it established itself um because it, and if you think about it right saturn having a lot to do with status one of the best ways to the only ways to really build your status is by good relationships that's why like even professionally people tell you it's about who you know you know but it's you know we know everything you know kind of plays out in reverse where it's like it's really about what you know but see the world we're in is about relationships you know this, you got to believe it or not this world is built on relationships ain't shit been done great without a team and you know that's the thing um even when we talk about the shadow government, when we talk about uh, the, the, the the powers that be, whatever you want to call it, you always got to think of these 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 uh these as systems built on uh, built by a group of individuals. You know, say a group of individuals, and this is why you know we like to you know especially with the subconscious community, we like to remind people that it's bigger than race. You know, it, yet it's easy. And on some parts, it might even be, you know, some people derive pleasure out of the stories that have been told to them as far as, oh, you this color, you know what I'm saying, you this race, so your people did X, Y, and Z. And, but you got to understand, this is an orchestrated history. 
you know, we're, we're, you know, not to dis discredit people from actually getting hurt in the process, people actually losing their life in the process. But you got to understand the there there was an orchestration of the concept for you to keep your mind in a certain concept. Concepts are like boxes, and so and that's how they maintain power. So you might have the wrong angle of how to approach. Um, this issue that's bigger than what you think it is, you know what I'm saying? Some there certain wars you don't even understand that, you know, were again created for you to have a certain concept in your mind that keeps you from any real power, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't be powerful thinking within the confines of a race or within the confines of anybody, you know what I'm saying? You got to be a spirit out here to do anything, uh, um, mystical, amazing, you got to do anything. Uh, miraculous you need to be a spirit out here you need to be in the same spaces that god was in and god wasn't in the space of thinking of race you got to think these things weren't you know when we think about real power and even the people who put these things in place like you know it's not just one group of uh, individuals looking the same way it's a group of individuals who had the same thought and feeling who came together and actually built a system that ended up working <laughs> But the way the the way it is right now is like um, we have to be strategic. We have to come together, you know. And this is more. I'm, I'm talking really more on the macro, like, um, and this is kind of relating to a lot of the age of Aquarius, because that is true, you know. What I'm saying shout out to endless abilities, because he had a comment. He was like, you know, and and you know, a lot of this opposition is is necessary, and I agree with that. Like, I'm like a lot of the, we have to. Um, even though we're in the age of Aquarius, we, we really know we're in the age of centaurs, but just for the, for the, to keep it simple, right? Being in this age of Aquarius again, right? We are getting to a point where eventually it's going to be about, um, the organization of things and the, you know, more Aquarian energy. But right now in the early stages, we have to play a little bit into this Leo energy and present ourselves, you know, it's about presentation. That's really what it, what it comes down to presentation and attention and, and, and with that attention gaining influence. The thing is, you just got to understand where, what, what to do with that attention. And that's where you get a lot of these, um, you know, overnight internet celebrities, people who go viral, who don't know how to handle or don't have anything sufficient behind what they're presenting. And a lot of times, again, like some people are just following trends and hit a jackpot and, um, you you know, again, you, it's about what you what you got behind that shit and your ability to create a system. But see, creating a system again needs individuals. It needs relationships. It needs connections. Other individuals who do things different than you, who have similar thoughts and feelings, but different ones. You know, what I'm saying who are individuals and unique in their own way. And again, you know, y'all not always going to agree, but that tension that that's part of relationships too. You know, a lot of the best, um, uh, you know, a relationship is really only as strong as the conflicts that it's endured. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes a, a relationship really strong. You know, and again, that's another Saturn principle. The ability to, it's something sustainable. And so relating and balancing a relationship is something that, that is, is constantly being sustained. Um, that's why even when it comes down to love, you, you know, you, we, to, you have to create that you have to create that space and sometimes it's uncomfortable to do that sometimes it's difficult but this is what it's a it's an active practice you know it's something that you consciously have to do and put energy into and so um and then even down to appreciation you have to create that that space in yourself to be like you know this is a different energy to mine but i can appreciate it because it takes it, it it's it's a new it's something new you know what I'm saying? Initiation. You got to think of a cardinal air. It's bringing a new idea to you. You know what I'm saying? Really, a, a new idea. We might associate new ideas more with Aquarius, but we got to remember Aquarius is fixed. Aquarius is fixed air. It's more like things was already established and going, and it knows how to continue and carry on. It's Libra that presents new ideas. It's Libra that pushes new thought patterns. You know, and that's what makes them a leader in their own right. All the cardinal signs got that leadership energy. You know what I'm saying? That that energy is what can take things off to the next level. You know, that, that that's something that can present a new idea. So right now, even with this new moon energy, this is a new, I, you know, we're going to be hit with new ideas and ideas that will have something to do with maybe a new relationship that we need to establish with other people, right? 
maybe you want to get into a new group or you want to associate yourself differently within that group. Uh, you want to relate differently in that group. And to see that, again, anything outside of ourselves, we have to do within ourselves first. So there needs to be new relation. You have to have a new relationship with yourself, with the things that you're participating in, people, places and things, wherever you're at right now. See, we just came off of virgo virgo had us thinking and analyzing and stressing about a lot of different things and see we still got a lingering venus and um virgo energy but i said venus for a reason because understand um you know understand house lords too when we're going through dated you know regular transits with with the sun and moon in libra right there is a uh that libra energy deals with venus Where's Venus at? Venus is in Virgo. So how this, how we're participating right now with this, with this Libra energy is going to have a slight essence or uh, energy of Virgo mixed in. So what's Virgo? Virgo is analyzing these things. And then, uh, like I was saying about the retrograde, Mercury went into Libra, right? Got a little information, then went retrograde. Now it's back in, in, in um, now it's back in Virgo. So our minds are still are with our minds we have to be aware of these past themes specifically energies very and these things become some somewhat some they can become difficult to pinpoint if you're not you know consciously aware of what's going on that's why it's good to kind of know where the transits are at but understand that you know as you're initiating these new relationships and even relating with yourself there's going to be thoughts that remind you of certain past events as the this is where you get the retrograde energy of old themes old theme but new decision there needs to be a new decision that you make on this old theme this old way of thinking this old and then again it's going to come from that energy is going to come from you analyzing and being a little critical about your relationships and how you want to relate and how you want to be related to as well there needs to be a balance and you know, within all of those energies, you're going to have to, again, look back and compare it to now and see what you didn't do back then that you probably need to do now or what you did back then that you don't need to do now. So that's kind of where that retrograde energy kind of plays out the most. And see, a lot of these retrogrades, um, I got the planner right in front of me. You know what I'm saying? Got to, got to, yeah, you know, commercial break. But let's go ahead and look. So, um. Francis down at the bottom makes it a lot easier to write down, you know, what, what you're experiencing while you're experiencing it and kind of plan out your um your transits. Um because I like to plan out through moon, by moon cycles because that you know, but anyway, um yeah, so October 2nd, which is what? I'm gonna say next Sunday. Yeah, I think it's next Sunday, October 2nd, because we in the 27th already, and it's only, what, like 30 days, and yeah, I, I believe it's next Sunday, so, you know, that's when Mercury is going to go direct, so, you know, again, things are going to speed up again, and, and that's my point right now, it's like, it's important to understand where, where the focus needs to be at, the focus needs to really be on these new relationships that we're starting, but we need to be making sure that we're, we are allowing ourselves to not be overly critical. And see, here's the thing with, with this Virgo energy, that might not be the thing to speak on, but at the same time, you should be vocal, especially if you're in a relationship, you should be vocal about, um, or you just, you should be aware of how you're communicating those criticisms, or you should understand that you're in that mode right now. So, and it's good energy to actually speak on because what you what we need to be doing is ironing out a lot of the excess bullshit from our relations as well. You know, we should really have strong intentions on why we're um, relating to this new group or why we're getting involved, and that's why it's important to really know. Um, to really work on how you are relating with things in your world first before you start to, you know, jump into these partnerships and start to, again, start to develop certain expectations based upon 
Venus being in Virgo, so you're kind of picky right now. You, you know, you're going to get into these relationships and you're going to be wanted to be related to in a certain way. So with this energy is like, keep in mind that you need to be very, uh, you just, you need to be strong on and, and, and clear about what you are doing to, to, I want to say deserve that type of energy too, because in order for something to be properly balanced, if you're bringing something to the table, someone else does. But if someone else is bringing to the table something, you need to bring something to the table too. And it's not about trying to be too um, analytical or manipulative or, you know, because when we, when we start to treat people based upon what they have, we start to, that's the, that's kind of like a, that's, that gets into the manipulative side uh, you know, the more Scorpio side of, you know, of, of that Libra energy, it, it starts to get a little, um, tricky, you know what I'm saying? It starts to get a little tricky because the second somebody, cause we all go through different times where we, you know, need certain things. It's like good to know what somebody has to offer, but when you only base relations based upon that, they become very met more Capricorn. Like it starts to be a little off of the energy of Libra. Like, but at the same time, again, like I said, Libra is picky, you know, with the Saturn exaltation, Libra is very picky about who it's related to because on some degree it needs to be useful. So, you know, this is just the energy. It's not right or wrong. It's not good or bad. It's just the energy it is that we're going to be in, you know, um, paying attention to kind of like, because we got, we all got to be real. That's the thing. We got to be real about it. We got to be real about what we're doing, what we're, what we are offering as far as value and what somebody else can offer us as value, you know, resourceful connections type energy, where at this point in the game, it's like, you really, you got to, the company you keep is really going to be important and see with Saturn still being in retrograde as well. And let me see where Saturn goes direct. Saturn goes direct on the 23rd right so we got a lot more time with, with saturn before it goes direct so even that being in retrograde that's dealing with our associations in general so when it comes to our associations we we are going through a period of time where we're also building up what we need to um we're, we're making we're cleaning up because virgo had us all that stress and all that worry and all that attention was really on us getting better with our own selves, you know what I'm saying? That was the energy where we, we, we needed to clean up our own selves. We needed to get our shit together. We needed to get our mind right. Now, Libra is like taking that that cleanup and making it more sophisticated. So right now we're, we're really smoothing out the edges. That's why the Venus energy is coming into play. Now, let me see. Yeah, that's why the Venus energy is coming into play. Um, because Venus look, makes it look pretty. Venus makes it look presentable. It makes it look like, like I said, sophisticated. Oh, damn, like that's that's well put together. The aesthetic is right. So right now, like we're taking a lot of that clean up from Virgo and now we're making it aesthetically pleasing. Now, aesthetically pleasing, I mean that beyond just how something looks, aesthetically pleasing as well uh, in relation to your energy. You're, you, we, we're, we, we need to present ourselves in a way that is again relatable and something that is is ready to build something that's you know ready to commit towards a proper partnership in which we can actually properly balance and get from point a to point b um with teamwork because that's kind of the overarching theme of right now and, and especially leading into the end of the year that's kind of what all this energy is kind of directing itself towards just simply because um again how we're gaining stability, how we're gaining, um, how we're approaching reality is in Aquarius at the moment. So it's, it, it kind of relies on community in a sense or organizing something. And see, we're all in an energy too, where we're trying to bring, it's like a new time, a new, it's a new time we're in. So we're all trying to figure this shit out, but that's the thing. And like, like I was saying about the age of Aquarius is like we, we because we're going into a time where community is going to be we're in we're already in a time where community is more important, you know, where com community is, is something that might not be as important now, but is 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 that's where everything is going towards, you know, um, how strong is your community and how um how do y'all circulate resources? How do y'all keep things sustained? Um, 
of course, we, you know, I, I don't like, you know, it's not about trying to predict the future, but it's just understanding where the energies are headed. Um, you know, and just right now, these specific energies are just centered around where it, it just makes it, again, us being in Libra season, it's just, again, it's the harvest already. So we need to be doing this shit already. But um, the thing is, we've been... I don't know. We've been kind of in the energy right now where that's like been the underlying thing, underlying theme. We just had to go through a lot of things before we got here. And see, now we're in the time to establish these new relationships. So, you know, relationships are going to be important, especially when we get closer to Aquarius season and, and things of that nature. Um, but kind of like I was saying before, you know, relationships are very important in general because these are the ways in which we are able to expand. And, um, and again, teamwork is the only way the dream is going to work. So these, you know, it's just important to keep that in mind. It's like we have to grow um, individually, but all that individual growth that we participate in from spring through the summer, now in the fall, it's time to actually see where that growth can be applied to other people. And that's Venus, again, that's Venus in the masculine side giving the love you know what i'm saying not in Taurus where it needs to receive the love it's it's giving the love so it's giving support it just needs to make sure that again justice is applied and there's balance like justice in the sense of balance if i'm applying myself in this way you need to be applying yourself in this way you know and that's where again that that cardinal energy plays out because it's like i'm initiating this and as initiating that Again, you need to be matched with that same energy in order for things, to, again, in order for the Saturn energy to be um, able to be exalted. Because it's like I, Saturn looks at things like I can't work with, not that I can't work with nothing, but if I'm going to be working with nothing, I'd rather, I'm, I might as well just be with myself. You know, if, I, if, if I'm trying to participate with somebody and they're just taking, that's not justice, that's not balance, that leaves me dry when i just need to take that energy and focus on myself and that's when uh that's when a le that's a lesson that a libra needs to learn as far as like just balancing with the aries energy where you know even the sun being in in, in libra we got to realize that the sun falls here so the sun don't have as much energy in any in, in general you know what i'm saying this the sun when it comes to how we participate we're not going to get as much attention or be able to have as much vitality in certain things if it's not being seen or involved with others. If it's not in some kind of way in relation or in some kind of way um, pleasant to present. You know what I'm saying? Because like Libra is different. Libra and, and Leo, you know what I'm saying? Their relationship is a, a sextile. It's an opportunity, you know, but, um, you know, they both deal with presentation. But how a Libra can help a, a Leo is like it could take the Leo's creativity and what gets attention and polish it. Libra is like a polish. So it's the presentation, but now polish. You know, it's the opp opportunity to make it intellectual and make it relatable. The Leo might just have this raw way of getting attention, but it might still not might be relatable. Now, understand the sun. The sun's participating in this. So as our actions, it's like, you know, during the summertime, it was all about just being seen. Now it's about being seen, but high class, you know what I'm saying? Libra brings that high class energy where it's like, now it needs to look classy. Now it needs to look like something that can, that can be in many different spaces, not just, you know, on one stage. It needs to be now able to be related to many different stages, you know what I'm saying? Not too many, you know what I'm saying? It's not like Gemini energy, but many different stages. It's something that can, it's almost like taking your brand and making it a household name, you know? You had a brand, but see the way you're presenting your brand is too is too uh is too one way. You know, it's too fixated on one way. You know what I'm saying? You a brand, you, 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 you we're trying to take this brand global, but you're too one way. I don't know if that may, you know, hopefully that makes sense, but you know, it's a form of expansion. And that's important to note, too, because Jupiter is uh, Jupiter's in Aries. So as far as how we're expanding and participating in our um, experiences, you know, that up until this point has been very, you know, very uh, individual, like, you know, very all about you. You know what I'm saying? And you being that representation of whatever it is that you are um, 
you know, you being that representation, you gotta, you gotta, whatever wisdom and knowledge you kick it, it's gotta come from you. You gotta be living that. And if you're not living that, people are gonna be able to see right through that. Um, you're not going to be able to, um, yeah, people are gonna be able to see right through that. And you're not gonna be able to materialize through your experience. You're not gonna be able to actually make any breakthroughs. Because with Jupiter, like, it's all about those those breakthroughs, those epiphanies that give you the idea and the spark to continue on, like that Zeus energy, give you that spark, that that new idea that that makes that gives you the confidence to take faith on whatever it is that you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Because when we get those epiphanies, those because those epiphanies are really just meanings and reasons, strong ass meanings and reasons, and those meanings and reasons is what give us the juice. And like even when people associate Jupiter with luck, it's not really luck as in like, oh, you just lucky. So you could just walk out and win a million dollars. No, it's like you had a certain idea, a meaning and reason, and they gave you a certain feeling. So it's like you had a feeling and a thought that you could combine and it gave you enough faith to fall in good favor. You know what I'm saying? With the universe, it gave you enough faith to whatever you participated in, whatever experience you, 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 you decided to jump in. It, it, you was already in a vibration that was uh, attracting a lot of energy. You know what I'm saying? Now, that don't always last long. And sometimes you can have faith around the wrong things. You can have the wrong epiphany, the wrong advice, the wrong um, meaning or reasoning. And that's when, again, that's when you might fall into unlucky times. But luck ain't, you know, something people think luck is just, yeah, luck is it's, it's the science behind that. Like, I mean, and the a spiritual signs behind that is you know it's not really just luck like some things you got oh you got jupiter you lucky no it's like no jupiter is good for again you have a wisdom and knowledge it's mental travel you know what i'm saying so you your spirit you went to a place that gave you an epiphany a thought and feeling that was strong enough to give you enough faith you know what i'm saying that faith is what led you into good good favor you know in whatever you participated in and a lot of that energy thinks it comes from not thinking so hard again it's the opposite from gemini and the opposite from um virgo you know in pisces and in sagittarius this is why pisces and sagittarius can live a life that's a lot more serendipitous a lot more um spontaneous because that works for them you know a routine and schedule it it might keep them from being able to have the inspiration to fall in good favor or it might keep them from traveling where they need to travel mentally at the time but at the same time it's all balanced you know what i'm saying because there's times in which they do need to be structured in certain ways you know because th that's the truth of it whatever sign we are energies we are that's our energies that's what we where we strive at but we also got a whole 360 that we need to account for and every now and then we're going through certain trances that need us to be in certain energies and this is how we expand but see how we relate with the stars is also us down here relating with different people Put my coffee in here it's over there um it's how we relate with different people you know think about that as above now think about it below different people apply different things to your life and you're not gonna like everybody energy and that's good people not everybody gonna like your energy but through these interaction and these relations we expand ourselves so you know this is the thing if you got energies that keep you away from relating to people or make it difficult, especially if you got the cancer energy, Capricorn energy, cancer might feel uncomfortable about it. Capricorn might have the wrong idea about it, right? Want to use it for something physical, um, you know, and uh, what's the other one? Aries might just disregard it altogether because it's it's more about itself you know what i'm saying not in a self-centered way but just in a selfish way where it's 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 tending to itself it, it, you know it, whatever it's tr trying to do it's going to do it with itself and not really even think not not consider um how another person can help you know it's, it's just don't consider that so those energies in particular being the square signs y'all have a lot more to learn it might be a lot more difficult for y'all to understand uh, or to get with what's going on but um you know, it all comes down to just being open and able to participate with, you know, who's around you. And again, using some of this energy, we have to use again, we got a we got a grand Ertron. So we got and, and Mars is in the mix. So those passions that we've been communicating about that should already have us in certain surroundings and circles that make it easy to see right with the sun, see and connect the moon or have an idea of who to connect to with this energy 
off based upon that. You know what I'm saying? If you've been playing good seeds with that Mars energy, communicating um, freely about what it is you're passionate about, you know, especially online, you know, making sure that you are being at least vocal. Like you don't got to be too loud. You ain't got to be the loudest in the room. You ain't got to be overly aggressive, but just be passionate about or yeah, be passionate about uh, what it is you're uh, be passionate about or yeah be passionate about communicating what it is that you're involved in or what you what you putting work into um be, be communicating about what's inspiring you at the moment and um the things you know say all that all that passionate energy um just being vocal about it uh will put you in the right situations like right now you got to open your mouth like this is a talkative time you know and especially coming off of that Virgo time you should have already got all the ideas together you know um yeah, so Mercury going retrograde, yeah, making us picky about these relationships, Venus, is, and see, Venus is like 27 degrees, Venus is about to hit a, um, it's about to get, uh, cuspy in a second, you know what I'm saying, and then when Venus gets into, well, we'll talk about that later when, when it's actually, um, getting into that, but just understand it's about to be cuspy between Virgo and Libra, and that really is just enhancing that energy, uh, and uh, quite frankly, we might be analyzing our relationships with that Virgo eye throughout the whole, you know, through, throughout the majority of Libra, or at least during the waxing period. And see, that's the important uh, note because the waxing period is when we put in the energy that fulfills the moon. So as we're putting in this energy, right, we need to also be aware of, um, we need to be aware of, again, what it is, because that's the thing. In Virgo, we was getting our mind right. We need to be aware of, we do need to be critical about who it is we're participating our energy with, who it is we're about to be spending this time with. Um, these are going to be good things. And, and it, it's probably even better for you to bring up certain things that truly aren't sitting right with you in that moment. You know, again, have discernment because not everything is meant to be vocalized. But the Virgo energy, for the most part, is going to give us at least a more harmonious way to talk about things that we are analyzing and being critical about. You just need to make sure you're not going too far and getting too analytical or too critical, but not checking yourself. Because that's the thing. You got to check yourself first with retrogrades. Make sure you're not in old energy and also be aware enough to say, oh, this is an old energy. This has more to do with me than it might have to do with somebody else. It might be something you don't like as far as an action or a way another person is choosing to relate with you. But you need to go within yourself and say, well, first of all, if I recognize this energy before, what was the outcome? And how did I feel about that outcome, right? How, how did I go about that outcome? And what was the issue? What was the root of the issue? Was it something that it was it a character trait that I realized that I don't like to relate to or don't find compatible with me and if that's the case okay I might need to remove myself entirely this individual is not more important than um my relationship with myself so let me remind myself that and be strong enough to separate early so that I can be around people that deserve my relation that deserve my Venus deserve my love and, uh, and support and appreciation so that we can properly balance that rather than me being unbalanced because I'm trying to uphold something that I know damn well don't work that's how the retrograde gotta work you know or the other way um something about this relationship isn't rubbing me right but last time I realized that it was me. I was I was thinking too hard about this or not allowing myself to um, be open to to another individual in this way. And I think I'm actually in my own way. So I think maybe there's something I need to change within myself. Right. Because from the past, the, the retrograde is showing me, oh, no, but before it was me. It was me tripping. So I need to participate with my mind better. So I might not need to separate from this individual. I, I might need to check myself so that I can better, better harmonize with this other individual. And see, that's how it's got to be. And see, again, it's going to be opposite Jupiter and Chiron as well. So you're going to actually have a 180 view of your old mistakes. And again, your ways of participating in an experience is going to we already kind of get developing wisdom over our mistakes and wherever you have Aries at in your chart whatever house that is that's where you actually need to be willing to just make the mistake 
but also open to learn about it. You know what I'm saying? That's where you kind of, it's, it might be uncomfortable, but that's actually where your experiences, the bulk of your experiences need to be in, is is getting involved in that energy, you know, in a, in a sense. And it being opposite um, Libra, it's already going to kind of, you know, send off signals because again, you're going to be able to see your past mistakes. It's just up to you to know what was actually a mistake and what was just, you know, you actually being you, you know, and, because us being ourselves is one thing, but we also got a part of ourselves that's striving to be better, you know what I'm saying? And then we have a part of ourselves that's attached to the past. I'm, I'm going to make a video about that probably right after this one. But, um, yeah, for the most part, that's going to be the energy um, that's that's kind of surrounding the energy. And so we, we are going to go into um, Scorpio. So with the Scorpio, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get into that energy. I don't want to go too far. But that's probably going to be tomorrow. Cause we, I mean, I'm already late degree of this uh, Libra energy. But, um, you know, and then again, we got the moon square and Pluto today, too. So with the moon square and Pluto, again, we're, we, we are these relationships. We need to be considering how they can actually help with our transformation. We need to learn how to feel into this transformation. We need to kind of understand um, who we are striving to be and how we are transforming ourselves to fit who we are you know because that's the thing it's like even striving to be in a sense is who you already are but you have to implement the change you as the spirit have to bring about the change so it's a you know just like how we do intentions this is something that you might not have materialized at the moment but it's something that you have to have spiritually already you know in your mind i got it already so it's like that type of energy where yeah we are who we are but who you are is also who you strive to be in a sense, but you got to be that, you know what I'm saying? And and it's not until you be that, that you see it materialize, you know, because again, energy only can respond to what it, what energy you in, you know, energy only attracts and repels based upon the vibration you in. So you got to understand that as well. And you got to understand you being something is going to bring about opposition that tests how how authentic you know what I'm saying you are in that energy so it's like it's it's tricky but for the most part just with Pluto and uh this Libra energy and see the sun not not squaring right now but the moon is so the moon is kind of giving you a, a first hand feeling you know what I'm saying of a first hand sense of what's to come you gotta understand that's why the moon moves faster than the sun and that's why like feminine energy like you know feminine energy even in your life can that that's why like if you're thinking about like a a a, a man and a woman right a, a woman might be sensing something or feeling something that hasn't quite materialized yet and a, a man too much in his ego or too much in his masculine energy might not listen um to what she's actually talking about because he doesn't see it and it's not logical or practical in reality in the moment but it's always good you know what i'm saying it's like that that's that's that that's how that play out, you know what I'm saying, just with the moon and sun, because there's many different ways that these two energies can play out, but, you know, and that's just a, a tip, you know, in, in general, you know what I'm saying, you got to make sure you understand what's going on with the feminine energy. The feminine energy can go too far, right, because it can be worried or stressed about things that aren't necessarily something to stress about at the moment, but at the same time, that awareness is important. So when it just comes to the moon and the sun relationship during a a full moon transit from the new moon to the full moon understand the moon already then sensed things way before the sun you know what i'm saying the sun just getting you know what i'm saying so it's like the especially the the train like the, the moon going through libra and the the things that like i was just saying how in later degrees of libra the sun will finally square pluto so that means that near the end of this, right, the season, right, near the end of Libra season, we're going to have to learn how to act on transformations. But right now, moon squaring Pluto, we're getting a sense of what that's actually going to need to be, if that makes sense. You know, this is like little tiny things about astrology, just concepts to understand, you know, saying concepts that might help you. Just, I don't know. It might expand the way you see um, and think about these transits because you know depending on how deep you go you know it's, it's all about how deep you want to go for real for real but it's a tool you know what i'm saying it's all about how familiar you get with the tool but um yeah so 
Yeah, so that's that's a little bit of the energy, you know. So the moon square Pluto and the Pluto still in retrograde too. Let's see what else is going on direct. Yeah, so we got yeah, so we got the Saturn going direct in Aquarius and Mercury going direct in Virgo. And then that okay, okay, that's it. Okay, so we're doing Saturn going direct. That's what we're leading up to, and Mercury going direct. Saturn and Mercury, so the way we think and our reality and what we need to participate in. So like th this is like a pre, a pre, uh, a warm up energy. This is like a warm up. This is like a warm up energy to. Uh, yeah, it's like a warm up energy to um, our associations. You know what I'm saying? We're learning how to relate better with ourselves and then with others on a one-on-one -on -one so that now we can organize and associate better as a unit. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what that's leading to. And then our Mercury, again, this is just us analyzing and going through things in our head. But by the second, we're going to have clarity on, again, how we need to think about our, uh, or how, yeah, how we need to think about what we're going through, you know? And of course, we'll talk about that when it goes direct, but for the most part, that's just understanding what things are leading to and why it's important right now to work on the way you're relating and to also understand um, who you're relating with and then using that Mars energy to really, um, again, that that that's just another energy that we can utilize to make it easier because this, again, the, the sun opposite Jupiter is going to make our actions a little, little questionable. And then the, just the sun being in a weaker state, it being in Libra, it's going to, kind of overly it might overly care about others and our relationship to others you know what i'm saying so but mars is there to kind of remind us of like where where are we at you know we're, we okay passion though passion I, I can talk about it all day I, ideas all day and these ideas can be used to construct things great things you know what I'm saying with that saturn energy and that's just how that grand air trine is working but all through communication all through our, us needing to open our mouths first and be vocal about what it is that we um, that we expect. You know, open, open what it is, you know. And it's not about expecting so much. But again, we, we again expect like like I said about that Libra energy. It, it's it needs something, you know. what I'm saying it's, it's, we're dealing with Venus and Saturn. It need a little something, you know. what I'm saying it needs something to balance out to make this justifiable. And that's really what I was trying to get at with justice. Like justice is like justifiable, something that gives it. You know what I'm saying? It gives it a form of a meaning, a form of a reason. You know what I'm saying? But not really. It's it's something that makes it real. You know the value, but made real. So it's like it needs it needs it needs something to exchange because Venus deals with exchange as well. You know what I'm saying? So it needs something to exchange in order to create balance. Um, yeah. And then uh, you know Neptune is in conjunctive, so we might not understand how this participates with our dreams for the most part. Um, this energy but uh dreams are our, our, our dreams are already in a retrograde state state anyway so when it comes to our dreams we already kind of been in a state where whatever it is that we have as far as a dream or a goal these things have we have been we've been tweaking the dream anyway you know what i'm saying tweaking the dream to make it something that can be um sturdy enough to build with because saturn will eventually uh oh no jupiter will eventually get back into pisces but which, again we'll talk about that later and shit like that um uh sun is also going to be in conjunct uh uranus so our changes and things those are going to kind of be energies that we we need to that we might misunderstand being too much of an individual too opposing you're not going to be able to establish a good relationship with people um you're going to wonder why you're all alone so you need to make sure you know what i'm saying and, and again it's not too too harsh of an angle but it's something to consider but again, even you in particip you participate in relationships, you need to make sure you know what makes you unique for real. You know, it's just it's got to be your uniqueness got to be something real, realistic, something that you are actually working to make stable. See, Taurus is like a processing thing. So you have to have a unique process, but it's got to be real. It's got to be something that you are also practicing. See, Uranus being in Taurus and Jupiter and Aries, these are energies that need you to whatever you are presenting yourself as whoever you think you are you need to be every day making realistic actions that support who you believe 
you are. That's where the authenticity comes. It's like anybody participating in energies or putting out energies that they're not really every because it's going to come a time where it's like where an opportunity going to come. Right. And you might take the opportunity, but say like you just presenting yourself like this. You don't really live and walk the walk and talk. the talk. like you just talk the talk. You don't really live this lifestyle. The opportunity might present itself. You might jump into that. But. Somewhere down the line, it's going to fall apart, whether it's like the people you're trying to participate with, they don't, they, they don't, they stop communicating with you or, and sometimes that's, again, it's not always on you. It's like, you know, but just keep in mind, it's like, we're, we're dealing with energies where even through that, you got to constantly be learning who are you really in the mix? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and being, and, and working to get more consistent and accurate on aligning who you believe you are and who what you actually do in your life like like and the best way i can say that is like you might be living your day-to-day -day life in a way that's very different than who where you what, what you actually want to be doing and what you want to be known for and what you want to be what you want to build stability from and you know what i'm saying and who you want to be and, and the wisdom and experiences you want to have you might be living your day-to-day -day life in a way that's drastically different than that you got to find a way to make this merge you know what i'm saying you got to find a way to make this balance where um how you're moving you know yeah you might not be you might not have all the opportunities and all the you know t time to do everything in that same energy but you need to at least be psyching your mind up with small things like even if you're going to work you need to be at work still figuring how you can play out those energies of who you like because it's like you might go through a certain situation or experience in which like say say whether it's a co-worker or somebody somebody come up to you and say something and you might shy away from being your full self but you'll go home and get online and be your full self online and present yourself in a way or try to live your life like you this but in real life, you're not practicing being stable and consistent. And you know what I'm saying? You might present online that you, oh, you, I'm working on this, I'm working on that. But then you turn the computer off and you're not actually doing what it is that you say you finna do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we got to align those energies and get clear on that because, you know, and that's another sun opposite Jupiter thing. You might you might think you want something or think you are something, but you're not actually practicing it enough to become real. And that's why, again, Uranus being a tourist, that's been going on for so long. But as it continues on, we we supposed to be in a different space with our individuality and how we're choosing to gain stability and be consistent on that individuality at this point in the game. Because Uranus is like 18 degrees and it's a retrograde too. So we're also at this point relearning how to do that. We're we're kind of seeing old ways we was being unique. And we're seeing now where we actually need to speak up. Again, be more vocal, be more consistent on our uniqueness. But it's 18 degrees. This is like that second deacon of Taurus. So this is dealing with that Virgo energy. This is dealing with being a little more critical, both of ourselves and being able be more committed on keeping that on a day-to-day -day routine pattern schedule with our uniqueness we need to figure out a pattern in which we can practice a lot of this um being stable on our um or consistent on our uh ways of gaining uh, our individuality you know what i'm saying when it comes to how we're going to use our individuality to gain stability you know what i'm saying so that's just something to keep in mind. And and again, these these is like uh ain't like this is a in conjunct with, with the sun right now. So again, this is just where we miss we might misunderstand things. And then Pisces is on the other side other side of that, you know. Is that a yo? Is that a yo? I'm not sure. Well, nah. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a yo. I gotta I gotta check. But yeah. So that's that's the energy. Uh, participate with that you know what i'm saying for the most part it's like a lot of it has to do again with with uh, ourselves and relating better to ourselves and then also um getting ourselves better so that as these things progress and, and time goes on we can better um associate ourselves overall um yeah 
Juno is in Pisces right now. So like we see longevity with our dreams, uh, but it's in retrograde. So we're 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 fi we're trying to find a longevity within our dreams and, and our imaginations. Um, but we also might be trying to experience longevity in a in a in a, in a illusion. So we got to be careful with that. Um, talking about Chiron already. Uh, oh, also the North Node is in uh, Taurus right now. So we might misunderstand our spiritual path at the moment. But um, again, our spiritual path is closely to, tied to our individuality. So like how, what I was saying about individuality, that, that applies to the same thing. You know, as far as being, that's because that's that's right now where, where our spiritual path is in that individuality. So don't misunderstand how you need to relate yourself. Like don't be trying to be too relatable to the point you're passive and you're not being yourself, but also don't uh, be too opposing and too separate. Yeah, and now you you can't build no sustainable relationship because you didn't separate yourself so so um, harshly. You know what I'm saying? But it, it won't play out too harsh because again, this is just an ink junk. So it's just a misunderstanding, just something again small that you might catch and be like, oh shit, uh, okay, I'm doing a little too much of the individuality, but. You need to test how far you can go with your individuality, too, because we all need to get a firm, a, a good sense of who we are in these associations and, 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 and establish our own spaces. So basically like a come correct energy, you got to come correct with it. So, you know, and, and not be afraid of life, not be afraid to rub somebody the wrong way, because that, like I was saying earlier, conflict breeds strong relationships. So you need the conflict sometimes. It's not about being irrationally or selfish or, or like overbearingly negative because that's not a pleasure to be around at all. But if you're relating to somebody, be real enough to say, well, I believe I, I, I see it this way, you know, without it being a confrontation that needs to explode and lead to a burning bridge. Just have your disagreement, but be open and fair and balanced. You know what I'm saying? If they bring about a justifiable point, acknowledge that point as what it is and even if y'all agree to disagree y'all can find still find balance okay if you do it that way we'll see if that works and if i do it this way i'll see if this works and again things might just come down to well if that works for you shit if, if we're on the same team i would want my teammate to do what's most comfortable to them and what's in their bag so that we can actually have a, a strong team like like that's how i always seen team and that's how i see business as well it's like why put somebody in a position that they not good at no, I want to know what you do. I want to know what you good at and what you like to be in so that whatever we do together, right, we can find the pockets. And again, constellation type business where you shine in your space. I shine in my space. We all, again, we attracting the whole thing. We got a system now, though. And you understand how you relate to this individual in the system. I understand how I relate to this individual in the system. But again, some relations are going to be better with others. Just like in any organization, you're going to have certain co-workers that, co-workers, I say co-workers, you're going to have certain co-workers that you work better with. And they don't got to be personal. And that's the thing about this grand air trine and this grand earth trine that we got to um, keep in mind too. Keep things from being too personal, but understand who you need to relate to and who you don't. You know, the good, the right people to relate to aren't going to make you feel like you need to take something personal all the time. And, and see, there's the thing. We take things personal by accident all the time, right? But certain people might not mean harm by it. We got to get better at deciphering, again, like who's who. See, if you relate to yourself in a certain way, you won't even find yourself in a lot of circumstances where people are throwing personal jabs at you. And, and even when they are, it's like, Still, you got to remain light. We're dealing with air. So anything that you, and this is just for water and fire signs at the moment, don't be so quick to react off of just raw emotion. Kind of take a minute to think. Just, you know what I'm saying? And again, like sometimes we got to act on our energies just for the sake of it. Somebody picking on you, you know damn well. But at the same time, understand the energies in the sky right now. The energies in the sky is like things ain't meant to be so personal. So even if you are taking something personal, the point is just don't let it distract you from what you're supposed to be acting on and getting back to the right vibration that's in alignment with what's going on in the sky. Um, the, the moon going to move through different things. So the moon going to hit a water sign, fire sign, you know, it's going to be all right. But 
at the same time, understand, don't let those emotions overtake you too much because we're in a time where we need to be participating in a more logical way, in a more air-like way. Um, and being air is, is being light enough to, again, get the business done or get the business right or stay consistent enough to get the result, you know what I'm saying? And even if you feel a little uncomfortable or you feel like something is, is, is personal, I understand that sometimes you just got to take your time for yourself. But understand that, um, yeah, it's just kind of just keeping that in mind that we're in a time where you need to learn how to be a little more light in general. So, you know, don't ignore your feelings, but understand where your feelings need to be placed at. Basically, um, put your feelings in your plate. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, be 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 the be in control of your shit. Like, put things where it need to be at. You know, you the spirit doing things. So even if something feel like it's overtaking you, you gotta flip you this is a good time to to be a air sign for the day. You know what I'm saying? It's a good time to learn how to be an air sign, learn how to be a learn how to participate with the air sign energy better. Learn how to participate with the earth sign energy better. So that you can learn how to again take more power over your energies right if you know you're an emotional person or you're a very sensitive person yeah earth and air times might be very uncomfortable for you but again strength conflict be conflict breeds strength in general so even with yourself your relationship with yourself understand that oh during this time me going through emotional turmoil, I can actually learn how to be a lot more air light and help me walk on water better, help me gain a little more stability so that I'm not easily swayed through emotions. And, and that's the earth part of it. Like, you got to look at these transits like that, too. That's how you really use this stuff as a tool. Like, so keep that in mind right now, too. That's just a little word for the fire and uh, water signs, too. So yeah, I think I think that's that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh more asteroids. We got um Lilith and Cancer right now. So when it comes to again, personal, you know, like our most embarrassing moments are gonna come from us being too personal, taking this too personal, also us feeling uh our, our comfort, you know what I'm saying? Us being um we don't want we might not we might be very terrified of being uncomfortable. That's just something we're gonna have to work through at the moment. Uh, because and that's kind of like an all time thing, you know, you, you just gonna have to work with that. You're gonna have to let that be something that, you know, hey, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we have to, and again, it's in cancer. So change, change your feeling. You know what I'm saying? If you feel uncomfortable, you got to understand that that's what we, we in a time where we need to participate in certain energies. So at the end of the day, you might need to initiate a change with that feeling. Um, and then we got the asteroid palace there too. Palace is like the energy we need to be in a relationship to. Um, so we we need to be in a we need to be in a relationship with our uh, feelings. Our you know say so we need to be in a relationship with our comfort. And it's almost like a relationship where you might just need to remind yourself like, look, I know you're uncomfortable right now, right? Talking to yourself. I know I'm uncomfortable right now, but this is this is why we're choosing to be uncomfortable now so that we can actually gain comfortability. Like, you know, so work on a relationship with your own feelings and even with your insecurities right now. It's like, we, we should have already really been dealing and, and developed a, even a new mind. Cause they like Virgo should have helped our mind know how to deal with stress and um, insecurities a lot better too. So use that energy to, you know, hopefully you've been planting the right seeds so that that energy can come a little easier to you but understand if you're feeling uncomfortable that's just what it is right now it's like you're gonna have to work with that energy and put yourself out there still because it, again it's the fall time and that uh cancer energy squares um that you know so don't let those fears and that that emotional side prevent you from establishing the right relationships that you need to establish right now even if it's a, a form of repair you might need to repair a, rela a relationship or connection this is the time to do it don't just think about it and then when the energy passes, you're like oh damn that would have been a good connection now you're trying to reach out and it's not the right energy for you to get as be as successful with that endeavor than it is right now right now it's a good energy to like if you had a connection not not an extreme fallout but if you had a a connection with somebody and it kind of didn't go well this might be the time that you can you know and it ain't got to be dramatic where you hitting them up like oh yo like let's read you know i'm sorry that no it's just participate in something new but this time bring your best bring a better version of yourself to it and uh hopefully they're bringing a better version of themselves and now now you relate to the right person if you relate to somebody and you see okay they're not bringing a good self for them 
to the point where it's making me unbalanced and bringing a, a negative side of me, you know, okay, let me separate, not lash out at them. Cause that's like the wrong energy. Nah, it's not Aries. Don't go upside the head. No, instead be like, man, I, I might just need to, you know, I might need to separate. You know, and a lot of people are talking about ghosting right now. You know, so that's starting to become a buzzword again. But you know, it's like this general. You know, I don't know. When it comes to ghosting and shit, well, do I care to talk about it? I mean, it's no right or wrong to shit. You know what I'm saying? People got certain reasons. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you might have to look in the mirror and just see why why did I get ghosted? You know what I'm saying? Because this the thing, like, nobody's entitled to an explanation. Like it's not don't make it wrong, you don't you know what I'm saying? But hey, some people some people justify, it. like it just is what it is, type shit. Uh we got series in twenty nine degrees Leo, so we we're gonna start to feel responsible more so for our routine and schedule. Um we're in the middle of that. So we was feeling responsible from what for what we give attention to. We was feeling responsible for that energy. Like, damn, I, I need to make sure I'm taking care of that and expressing that. You know, we might felt like we needed to get our shit off. Now we're going to feel still expressive, right? We're going to feel respons responsible for expressing um, maybe our criticisms. And this is good energy for this Libra energy because it, we're going to feel responsible for that energy of like, no, if there's something that is, is kind of bothering you, right? Something that you're analyzing that you, you that you're not quite sure on Virgo energy, you're going to use the energy to express it, bring it about, you know, and you're going to feel responsible for that. And as it moves further into Virgo, it's going to, you know, be a little less expressive. But again, because it's expressed early, it's not going to have to do as much expression. It's going to be able to analyze and criticize but within the confines of its own mind and not have to do too much, you know what I'm saying? And it might even learn stuff about itself to make it, it you make you more relatable, you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to feel responsible for kind of cleaning a lot of that, that energy up. That cause series is that energy that we feel low key responsible for that we kind of need to take care of as if it's a child. We not might, might not always want to take care of it, but we know we need to tend to it in order for everything else to be working in our lives you know what i'm saying because when we got a child like it's our responsibility so it's that's kind of the energy of series it's like an energetic responsibility you have a cert at a certain time um and in your natal chart that's what you low-key responsible for so any relationship anything you participate in people like you're gonna low-key feel responsible for that and you might reject reject that but that's you like Within that, that be the reason. That be like a low key reason why our relationship might fall or a partnership might not come through is because you got lazy on your series energy. Like series kind of low key go deep. But um, yeah, and that's everything for right now, man. Like again, energetic overview. I wanted to make sure I got everything that you know, or most at least majority of things, because there's probably several things I missed. But anyway. Much love. If y'all looking for a reading, my readings are open. Email below. Um, thank y'all so much too for tuning in to Pleiades, man. Y'all, y'all made that shit go up. So I'm working on the music video right now. Uh, trying to get to that to y'all as soon as possible. And it's also on its way to streaming services. But I have more information about that coming soon. Um, but yeah, much love and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.